our hands together. Welcome all our online family watching us this morning. Great to have you. It's going to be an awesome Sunday. Fantastic to be at church. Wasn't that video cool? I love every one of them. I, I love the love lessons they were uh, sharing with us today. And uh, how many of you, you've been married for over 50 years? Would you mind giving us a hand? Wow, we've got a few hands already in the building. Give them a big, big congratulations. Come on, I think we can do better than that. That is absolutely awesome. Congratulations. Anyone who you've been married for 40 plus years, give me, a, give me a wife. Wow, look at that. Hands going up. Let us know online if you are watching and how long you've been married for. Um, as I was preparing for this message series, I came across a few marriage jokes and I thought, oh, I want to share it with church. And uh, it's good to have a good laugh in church because church should be enjoyed, not endured. Can I get an amen this morning? I came across this. It said this, marriage is when a man and a woman become as one. The trouble starts when they try to decide which one. Um, then I love this. The wife said to her husband, our new neighbor always kisses his wife when he leaves for work. Why don't you do that? To that, the husband responded, how can I? I don't even know her. Um, I love this one. An elderly couple had been shopping at a grocery store and the wife decided to steal a can of peaches. The inevitable happened and she was caught. Upon her court date, the judge asked her what she had stolen. Your Honor, I stole a can of peaches. The judges replied, how many peaches were in the can? She said six. The, judges, the, the judge then said, I will sentence you to six days in jail. Her husband out of nowhere stood up behind her and replied, Your Honor, she also stole a can of peas. There you go. There you go. Ah, oh, great. <laughs> That's great. Well, today we are starting a brand new message series called It's Complicated. Everybody say, It's Complicated. Over the next few weeks, we are going to look at God's design for marriage, for singleness, dating, relationships uh, in general. I want us to debunk some of the myths that exist about marriage and relationships and dating. And, uh, and I want us to really look at what the Bible says. What does God really say about this topic? So can I encourage you to make it a priority to be at church as we uh, look into these topics, as we dive into this message series. But before we go any further... I want to know the mix-up of people here in this service, here in this room, watching online. So if you're married or you're in a relationship or, 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 or you're engaged to be married, would you mind giving me a wave so that I know how many married couples do we have in the building? Thank you very much. If you're single, would you mind giving me a wave as well so that I know how many single people? Well, single people, now is a good time to look around. If you're single, ready to mingle, you don't know. This could be the most defining moment of your life and uh, you will be ever grateful for me uh, for this moment. And well, it's great to have all of you here today. I pray that this message series will be, will be a huge blessing to all of you, regardless of your relationship status. Can I encourage you to make sure no matter what your present relationship status is at the moment, I pray that you will listen to this message with, with an open heart, with an open mind. And uh, doesn't matter what has happened in the past, I pray that you won't be sitting there thinking, you know what, this doesn't apply to me. Can I tell you, the Word of God applies to everybody. It's true, it is alive, and I pray that it'll speak to all of us. I pray that you'll allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you this morning through the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that every marriage represented in this room will, will be restored, that it'll go from strength to strength. Maybe you're here today and you're hurting because you have a broken marriage. I pray that you'll allow the Holy Spirit to heal your heart, to, to mend your heart. I pray that you will have a godly perspective of, of what marriage is all about, no matter what you've been through. Maybe you're here today and you are single. I pray that God will give you a new revelation, a new perspective, a new understanding as you prepare for the right person. So let's get into it this morning. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for your word. God, we don't want to be entertained. We don't want knowledge. We pray for transformation. Holy Spirit, I pray for every relationship, every marriage, every relationship status, whether people are single, married, Engage, it doesn't matter. I pray that you would speak to us this morning. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And everybody said, amen, amen. I believe most of the problems in the world can be solved immediately if we get our relationships right. Can I say that one more time? 
I believe with all my heart, all of our problems in the world can be solved immediately if we get our relationships right, because life is all about relationships. And relationships are the building blocks of life. I really felt convicted to speak on marriage, to speak on relationships. As I look at the problems that we are facing as a nation, as I look at what is happening in our world from wars to what is happening in families to what is happening in our workplaces to what is happening in our churches, it can all be summed up to summed up, summed up or summed up or, 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 or what, but boiled down to one word, relationships. Christianity is about relationships, loving God, loving people. So I want us to pay attention to this. Let me tell you why relationships are not working at so many levels in our world today. Listen carefully. I believe with all my heart that the number one reason why so many relationships are falling apart in our world today, there are so many relational problems in the world today is because they are not defined at what I call a God level. We don't re define relationships at a God level. Instead, we've defined them on earth's term. In other words, we've let the world define what relationships should look like. And as a result, we have so many relationships falling apart. Here's the truth. Here's the reality. If we want the God kind of success in our relationships, if we want the God kind of success in our marriages, I believe that we need to redefine marriages. We need to redefine relationships according to what God says about them. So can I get an amen this morning? Today to kick off the series, I wanna talk to us about marriages. And, and if you're single or, or, or you're not married today, I don't want you to sit there thinking, oh, I wish I didn't come to church or you're gonna go on Facebook or, or you're gonna switch off for the rest of the message. Can I tell you, this is relevant to all of us, what we're talking about. This can be applied in your relationship with God. Can I tell you, marriages matter to God. Marriages matter because it's God's idea. It's God's invention. It is not a man-made idea. It is God's invention. God designed it. Can I tell you, it is not a social experiment. Marriage is God's idea. He ordained it and it's for His glory. Listen carefully. Godly relationships operate on what the Bible calls a covenant. Godly marriages operate on what the Bible calls a covenant. A covenant is an agreement between God and His people. I've been a pastor for, for many years now, and over the time, I was trying to count it yesterday, I think I've taken over 60 weddings. From what I can uh, remember, I've taken a few weddings, and, 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 and at these weddings, I've seen anything and everything. I've had people faint. Uh, I've had uh, not just the brides late, I've had grooms, uh, they've been late over an hour. I've seen mother-in-laws late for the wedding. Uh, I had one mother-in-law, she was one hour late and she walked down the aisle uh, and, and she, she was like basically made a statement, I'm, I'm in charge and uh, I've seen anything and everything. I've, I, I had a wedding, I had to officiate when I said to them, you, uh, I said to the bride, you put the ring on your um, husband's ring finger uh, and the husband said to me, pastor, I'm so sorry, I don't have a ring finger. Uh, I lost my ring finger uh, in a motorbike accident. What do we do? I was like, I don't know, it's not in my manual. To this day, I have no idea uh, where the ring went. His name was Charlie. All I could remember was that video, the little kid been, that, that, that got Charlie bit my finger. I was like, Charlie doesn't have a, have, a, have a ring finger. But anyway, I say to the couples, one of the most important things that you need to make sure that you bring with you to the rehearsal is the marriage license. I can't marry you without that piece of paper. That is the most important piece of paper. Uh, you know, there have been times people have forgotten and I'm like, I need to make sure that I have the marriage license because without that piece of paper, your marriage is not valid. So do you realize that there are countries in the world today who are now in the process of putting term limits on marriage license? There are countries in the world now, what they have done is, or what they're doing is that they are putting a two-year term limit on a marriage license so that when a couple gets married for some reason, if it doesn't work out, they are both free to go two years later because your marriage license is no longer valid. 
But if you choose to stay married, you need to make sure you go and renew your marriage license. Otherwise, it is not valid. It's like getting your car rego done, making sure that you've, you know, renew your car rego. Otherwise, you'll get a ticket. So why in the world would people do crazy things like that? Let me tell you why. Because they are doing this because they have given up on ho- given up hope on concepts like marriage. Unfortunately, we, instead of looking at them at a God level, we have let the world define what marriage is all about. We've let shows like Married at First Sight on, on TV define what marriage is all about. Let me tell you, marriage is God's idea. He invented it. And he ordained it for his glory. And that's why it's important for us to talk about this at church. Let me tell you, the devil doesn't want me to talk about this this morning, but I'm gonna talk about it today because it's God's idea. And it is important that we look at it from a biblical perspective. perspective. Marriage was instituted by God. It was his idea. If that's the case, then why are marriages falling apart? Why, is it, why, why are they falling apart? Not just outside the world, even in the church. Why are marriages fall? Why does marriage breakup happen? Marriages fall apart because so many people treat marriages like a contract rather than a covenant. Let me tell you, there's a big difference between a contract and a covenant. If you're taking notes, let me encourage you to write this down so that you know the definition of what a contract and what a covenant is. Let me tell you, a contract protects our rights and limits our responsibilities. A contract protects our rights and limits our responsibilities. Have you ever heard people say, I have my rights? We all fight for our rights. I have the right to do this. I have the right to do that. We all fight for our rights. You see, in a marriage, it doesn't work that way. A contract protects our rights and limits our responsibility. But a covenant, on the other hand, does the exact opposite. A covenant marriage, in a covenant marriage, we give up our rights and we pick up our responsibilities. Can you catch what I'm trying to say? In a covenant relationship, we give up our rights and we pick up our responsibilities. I've been married to the most amazing woman for the last 13 years. Just checking 13 years. Yes, just checking if she remembered. It was only a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I can't walk around my house every morning going, these are my rights. These are my rights. Can I tell you, it doesn't work that way. Why? Because that's a contract. In a covenant marriage, in a covenant relationship, we give up our rights and we pick up our responsibilities. Let me put it this way to help you understand. Jesus looked at the world and he saw how messed up we were. And he said to the Father, I'm going to give up my rights and I'm going to pick up the responsibilities and die on the cross for the sins of the world. Aren't you so glad that he came down from heaven to earth so that we can be a church today? Can I get an amen this morning? So that's how a covenant marriage works. We are here only because he gave up his rights and he picked up our responsibilities. So let me tell you, if we want the God kind of success in our relationships and in our marriages, we need to give up our rights and pick up our responsibilities. So this is what we are going to do this morning. We're going to Focus on some rights that we give up and responsibilities that we pick up. And this is not to convict anybody or point the finger at anybody. And I am not a marriage expert. I've only been married 13 years. There are people here in this room. They've been married longer than me. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to teach you from a biblical perspective because anytime we need to know the truth, you've got to look at the Bible. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So turn with me to Genesis chapter 2, verses 21 to 25. It says, So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now my, sorry, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man shall leave his father and a mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. Three rights that we give up in a godly marriage. Here's the first one. Number one, we give up the right of priority. 
We give up the right of priority. Everybody say priority. We give up the right of priority. No longer will I be number one. No longer will I be number one. When I'm in a covenant marriage, now, now I establish a new priority, and that is my wife. In your case, that's your spouse. No longer will I have anything or anyone else in number one except for God. Your spouse is your number one priority. You give them the right to be the first priority in your life. For in a covenant marriage to work, you need to make that a matter of priority. If you want your relationship with God to, to, to flourish, if you want a covenant relationship with God, can I tell you, God must be number one. You need to make that a matter of priority. God won't take second place. God wants to be your first. Why? Because He puts you first. That's why the Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Do you realize that order communicates priority? Order communicates priority. What's the first thing I do when I wake up? Or who has my attention? What has my attention? Order communicates priority. You see, here's the thing. A lot of us say that some say that my spouse is my priority. Here's the question. Do we demonstrate that? Sometimes we say they are my priorities, but we give the best of us to our, to our work, to, to this and to that, to our careers, to our hobbies and other people. And, we, and what we do is that we give the leftovers to our spouse. So here's a question. We say they are number one, but the question is, are we demonstrating that? Priority is a, is a key part of a, of a covenant relationship. Look for every way to put your spouse as the most important person in your life. Why? Because order communicates priority. Number one, the first thing we give up is the right of priority. The second thing we give up is the right of ownership. The right of ownership. Everybody say ownership. In a covenant marriage, we say, I give you the right to co-own and administrate everything in my life. I'll give you the right to co-own and administrate everything in my life. You don't walk around the house saying, well, I own all of these things. I own the TV. I own the car. I own this. I own the pantry. These are all mine. Everything is mine. Now, let me tell you, that is a spirit of contract. And that's the kind of spirit that will break a marriage, that will destroy a relationship. In a covenant relationship, we give up the right of ownership. Let me tell you, selfish people cannot be in a covenant relationship. Listen to this carefully. The secret to a covenant marriage is not what you demand, it's what you give away. The secret to a covenant marriage is not what you demand, but it's what you give away. 1 Corinthians 7, 4, the wife gives authority over her body to her husband, and the husband gives authority over his body to his wife. Now, let me be very clear. We don't use that verse to say, I own you. The only way you can literally give ownership uh, is to simply say, everything I have is yours. We give up the right of ownership. My time, my money, my possessions, my body. When you're in a covenant relationship, everything goes from mine to ours. Covenant relationship. I don't make that demand, you know, everything I have is mine. It's all mine. No, we are in co-ownership. We give up the right of priority. We give up the right of ownership. Number three, in a covenant relationship, we give up the right of privacy. We give up the right of privacy. In other words, I give you free and unhindered access to every part of of my life, seen, unseen, every area, every part of my life. In other words, there is no secret sight to me. When my wife rings me and, and she goes, hello, when she's been out, I can just tell by her voice when she's been out shopping. I'm like, hmm, what do I need to know? Because she'll often start with me, hey, I found a nice top for you, and can I get this? And I'm a sucker, I fall for this. And I'm like, oh, that is so kind of you, that is so thoughtful of you, but now I know. But what happens is when she says, I bought something for you, now I'm like, what did you buy that I do not know of? See, 
you know, when we, when we read about Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, it says they were completely naked. There was no secret side to them. They were running around the Garden of Eden completely exposed. And the Bible says they were not in shame. They were running around completely exposed. It wasn't like the Bollywood movie, you know, where you see songs. They are doing many costume changes. One minute they are here and they've had a costume change and they're up in the mountain and they're in the lake and they've got another country. No, Adam and Eve, they were completely naked. They were exposed and they were not in shame. What I'm trying to say is that you cannot be in a covenant marriage. I cannot be in a covenant marriage with shares where she's telling her friends, well, I can't talk to Boyd about it because if I told him about that, he's going to go mad. He's going to get angry. He's going to blow up. Let me tell you, that is not a covenant marriage. In a covenant marriage, I'm free to share anything with my spouse without fear of retribution. A covenant marriage says, in my, my life is an open book to you. You share confidently the good, the bad, the ugly. There is no secret. John 15, 15, Jesus said, I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends. Since I have told you everything, the Father told me. Jesus is saying in that passage of Scripture, I tell you everything that is in my heart because we are in a covenant relationship. In a covenant relationship, we give up the right of priority, ownership, and privacy. And we pick up three responsibilities. What responsibilities do we pick up? Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. It's a long passage of Scripture. Let's read it together. Wives, submit yourselves to your, your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present herself to him as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one, has, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body just as Christ does for the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself and the wife must respect her husband. Three responsibilities that I want us to focus this morning in a covenant marriage. We looked at three, 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 three um, rights that we give up. Now we're looking at three responsibilities that we pick up. Number one, first one, write this down in your notes. Love unconditionally. Love unconditionally. Why? Let me tell you why. If it's not love, if it's not, sorry, if it, if it is conditional, it's not love. If love is conditional, then that's not love. In a covenant marriage, we say, I assume the responsibility to love you according to the standard of Christ's love for me. How much did Christ love me? Romans 5.8 but God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we, while we were still sinners. This is how Christ demonstrated His love for us. He didn't wait till we were perfect. He didn't wait till we had all our I's dotted and, dotted and T's crossed. And so he didn't wait for us to get everything right. No, He loved us. He died for us. He chose us while we were sinners. That is unconditional love. A contract is conditional. If you don't fulfill your part, you're free to go. You're released. In a contract, both parties agree. But in a covenant, it only takes one. I am not basing it on what you do. I'm basing it on what I have decided. I'm going to be faithful to you until death do us apart. In a covenant, it only takes one person. I'm going to stay faithful. It's the same with God. There have been many times I've not been faithful to Him. I haven't honored Him. I haven't given the worship, the glory that He deserved. I've been selfish. I've done my own thing. But He promises, I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
a covenant relationship. Do you catch what I'm trying to say this morning? First responsibility is to love unconditionally. Number two, honor respectfully. Everybody say, honor respectfully. We, we live in a world where we devalue people. We're even living in a world where young men, they don't know how to treat women. Honor says, I will respect you because you are one of God's creations and I will show you honor. Honor means putting something, sorry, putting value on something. When you honor someone, guess what you're doing? You're putting value on that person, not because of their title or who they are. You are honoring them. You're respecting them because they are a human being. In our church, we honor everybody. There's 360 degree honor. It doesn't matter who a person is. If they walk in through the door, our culture is that we treat everybody with love and respect. So how do we show honor in a covenant marriage? First Peter 3, 5 to 7. Another long passage of scripture, but it's important for us to look at this. It says, for this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to adorn themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands like Sarah who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give away to fear. Husbands in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as years with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Listen carefully. As you read the book of Genesis, you read about Abraham. Two times he had to lie about his wife. He called her his sister because he was afraid of being killed. So Abraham calls her, this is my sister. And this is what I love about Sarah. How did she respond to that? Instead of calling him a liar, she called him her master. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to tell you tonight you need to call your husband master. If you want to, you go ahead and do that. You know, whatever floats your boat, you do that. But what I'm, that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that Sarah honored her husband even when he was not honorable. Why? She didn't look at him for all his mistakes, all his failures, all the lies that he was saying, she called out the best in him even when he was not honorable. Now I love chess. Some, sometimes the boys play up and I may get worked up and I'm like, Arr! and she'll be like, boy, don't, 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 don't tell them that's what they've done or that's who they are. No, we call out the best in our children. Why? Because I want our boys to grow up remembering who their parents called them to be not what they have done. Can I encourage you, let's build a culture, let's be a church where we celebrate the best in people. We call out the best in people. We call out the best in each other. Sarah, she called out the best in her husband even when, she was, when he was not honorable. Husband treats you, he says, husband treats your wives with honor and respect. Why? So it doesn't hinder your prayer life. You have no idea how many times you know, I've had a bad attitude or I've said something and I've gone before God. It's Sunday, God sent revival. Oh, I pray the message goes really well. And God said, you need to go and, you know, sort your attitude with your wife. Don't look at me like I'm the only one who's done this. And they're like, oh, we need to pray for our pastor. You know, text 4040, pray for boy. What I'm trying to say is that if you want God to answer your prayer life, can I tell you, your relationship with one another absolutely matters. Right, because life is all about relationships. Can I tell you, if we want to tell the world that we are disciples of Jesus, can I tell you, it's important that we love each other within the four walls of the church. When, when people from the outside of the church come, they go, there's something different about this place. Relationships matter. Love unconditionally, honor respectfully. Number three, submit mutually. Submit mutually. Listen carefully. Submission is, some, is not something we demand. Submission is something we give. Submission is not something we demand. Submission is something we give. It's mutual. Ephesians 5.21, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Let me tell you, these keys that I've, I've talked to you about this morning, if I could ask the team to come and join me. These keys that I've talked to you about this morning, it's not just about Building a great marriage, they're also about building a great Christian life. 
If you want to be a disciple of Jesus, these keys are absolutely important. Well, you may say to me, well, how does it work? Write this down. God must be number one priority. I talked about giving up our rights of priority. God must be number one. Number two, I'm talking about, I talked about ownership. Give him everything you have. Give him everything you have. God, I give you my heart. I give you my unseen life. I give you my public life, every area of life. Don't hide anything from him. Then I'm talking about privacy. Give him access to every area of your life. Respond to him with unconditional love by loving him back. You didn't choose him. He chose you. Honor him by lifting your hands and in worship and submit to His Lordship. Let me tell you, when you do that, you move from religion to relationship. When you do that, you go from a contract to a covenant. In a moment, I wanna do two things. First of all, I wanna give you an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. I never like to close any of our services without giving people an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. And then after that, I'm gonna take a few moments just to Pray for marriages here in this building as we've talked about marriages. While every eye closed, every head bowed, if you're watching online, can I tell you now is not the time to log off and leave. I pray that you will continue to stay. But I want to give people, everybody here in this room, an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. I want to ask you, do you have religion or are you in a relationship with Jesus? I read that scripture. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. God must be number one. Is He the number one? Is He the first person? First, is He first in your life? Would you give Him access to every area of your life? Say, God, I give you everything, the good, the bad, the ugly. Everything I have, I give to you. Will you say, I submit to your Lordship. I declare you are the Lord of my life. I want my past forgiven. I want my future secured in Jesus, secured in heaven. If you're here today and you're saying, boy, I want, to surrender, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I want to move from contract. Let me tell you, religion is about a contract. But a relationship, it's a covenant relationship. Today, if that is you, if you're watching online or you're in the building, you're like, in a moment, I'd love to include you in a prayer. Would you say yes to Jesus? Well, every eye closed, every head bowed. The Bible says, if you acknowledge me before men, I will acknowledge you before my Father in heaven. In a moment, I want you to ask, I'm gonna ask you to do something very bold. On the count of three, I want you to quickly put your hand up, no matter where you are, how many times you've prayed this prayer before. If you're here today and you're saying, Boyd, I want a relationship with Jesus. I wanna love Him. I wanna serve Him. I wanna live for Him and Him alone. I don't want religion. I want, my, I want that forgiveness. I want that freedom in Christ Jesus. If that is you, on the count of three, I want you to quickly put your hand up. If you're watching online, you go ahead and you press that button. That in the moment you say, saying yes to Jesus, we're gonna ask you to do something very bold. On the count of three, I want you to quickly put your hand up. The rest of the church, we're gonna clap and we're gonna celebrate as people make the most important decision of their life, the most defining moment of your life. One, two, three, wherever you are. Come on, would you put your hands up? Hands going up all across this building right now. Yes, at the back there. Anyone else? Come on, let's celebrate as people say yes to Jesus. Most important decision of your life. I want to ask the whole church to pray this prayer from the bottom of your heart. This is not a religious prayer that we are praying. To help you pray, I'm going to ask the whole church to pray this. Would you pray this prayer from the bottom of your heart? You can go ahead and put your hand on your heart as an act of saying, you know what? This prayer means something. I'm surrendering my life to Jesus. Come on, let's all pray it out nice and loud. Dear Jesus. Come on, let's pray it out nice and loud. Dear Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I declare you the Lord of my life. I believe in Jesus. Today's a new day because of what you did on the cross for me. I thank you. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I'm a child of God. Amen, amen. Can we give God praise for every person that prayed that prayer? Best decision of your life. So proud of you. So proud of you. If you did that online, so proud of you. Can I tell you, 
you said yes to Jesus and you put your hand up, that's the first step. But on your way out, you'll see a team of people. They've got blue t-shirts with the words, call me in. They want to give you a Bible. They want to pray with you. We want to tell you your next step. On the first Sunday of June, we've got baptisms. Can I encourage you? That is your next step. Make sure you do that. Or you can simply text the word yes to 4040. That'll give you a link. Greatest decision of your life. But in a moment, I'm going to ask Malcolm to come on up and join me. But I want to pray for every marriage here in this building. Can I tell you, when the, when the enemy wants to attack a church, guess what? He starts with marriages. When he wants to attack a family, often he starts with marriages. But if you're watching online, you can join us in a moment. If your spouse is sitting next to you, why don't you hold hands together? If your spouse is not here, just pretend you're holding your hand. But I want to pray for, I'm going to ask marriage, um, uh, Malcolm to pray for every marriage here in this building. Judith, you can come on up as well. You've got to hold hands with Malcolm. I'm going to ask she has to come on up as well. Just an excuse to hold her hand. You can come on up and join me on stage. But we're going to pray for marriages. Can I get a big amen from all the married couples here in this building? Amen. Thank you, guys. How long have you been married? 57 years. 57 years. Praise God. What's the secret to 57 years? Uh, for me, it's just continually falling in love every day. And, and, and what, what about you, Judith? Hard work. Hard work. <laughs> How many pairs of toothpaste do you guys have? <laughs> Two. Two. <laughs> all right. We're going to pray for all the marriage um, represented here in the room. Thank you. Father, we, we just thank you that it was your plan and your purpose that a man and a woman would come together, fall in love with each other, and commit to each other. We thank you, Lord, that in your plan and your purposes, it's not a contract, but it's a covenant. Yeah. Lord, it's a coming together where we join our hearts and our lives together and become one, where we don't count each other more important than the other, but Lord, where we pour out our, our lives and our hearts for each other. Father, I just pray over marriages today we know there is such an attack that the enemy would love nothing better than to see the whole institute of marriage destroyed but oh god we know that it's part of your plan and your purpose and we rejo we rejoice over marriages lord i rejoice over every marriage that is represented in the church in the people online today and i pray your very best for every marriage, Lord. Father, your heart is towards each one of us. Your love is greater than we can ever imagine. And so we, we stand before you today and we claim the very best over marriages in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Malcolm and Judith. Give your spouse a kiss. It's okay to kiss in church. Only if you're married to that person. So there you go. I'll give you a kiss on your hand. Go there, you can. You're going to have a seat. All right. When we all stand to our feet, I'd love to pray a prayer of blessing over us as we go. Why don't we lift our hands as an act of receiving this prayer of blessing. God, we pray for over your congregation, over your church this morning. God, I declare good health. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of our lives. God, I pray right now for anybody who may be battling illness. By your stripes, we are healed in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I pray for provision. God, I pray for every marriage. I pray for every family. I pray for every individual right now. God, I pray as we go into a brand new week, God, we want your presence. We want your, you, you to go before us. As Moses said, we don't want to go unless you come with us. The Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. God bless you. Make sure if you said yes to Jesus, you stop by, talk to one of our team. There's coffee over there on, on the left, as you on my left, as you go over there. Have a fantastic week. We'll see you next Sunday. Make sure you're part of the whole message series. Come on, let's celebrate the Lord. Thank you, team. Brilliant.